Hello my YouTube friends and happy Saturday. So today I'm going to talk about ExxonMobil and Chevron stock a bit. I had one of the people in the comments ask me if I could get into it and why it's in my portfolio of set it and forget it, own forever type stocks. So we're going to talk about that a bit. I'm also going to talk about some other stuff with the economy and all sorts of things. So stick around. Should be a good video today. Good morning. My name is Adam Kahn, and I'm the rational. Oh, sorry, forgot that. It's investing with Adam K. So used to the irrational investor, even though I changed it a little while ago. I still think of myself as the rational investor. Anyway, so Exxon Mobil and Chevron, and why do I hold them, and what do I like about them? Now, to be fair, I bought both Exxon and Chevron a little over two years ago when the market was a good bit lower. And there was bad news on them, which goes along with my philosophy of bad news, good companies. Exxon, they had some issue. The stock dropped to like 40 I think it was even under $40 a share at one point. And when I picked it up, I was getting about 11% yield on the investment. And I think they're a great company with bad news. And it was paying an incredible dividend, which as much as I say don't get attracted to dividend, if a company is getting beat up and it's out of favor and the yield goes up simply because of the bad news and the emotions of the stock, to me that's kind of a different scenario. Now, now that it's where it is, if I'd bought it more recently, I don't know what I would be doing with it because it hasn't performed so great over the past 12 months or so. Same with Chevron. Both of them have just been range trading. But they also both pay a decent dividend in today's dividend world. Now, at my stage of life, I slowly do want to transition into more dividend stocks, which is also why I say don't listen to me. I'm just some guy on YouTube sharing the information, and I'm doing what works for me. Now, before I even go any further, I want to thank you guys. I did this at the end of my last video, but I really mean it. And I don't mean the typical thank you because so many subscribers and this and that and the other. Like, that's all really cool, and thank you for that as well. But what I want to thank you guys about is by allowing me this venue to talk about what I suggest for trades, it's made me do better at what I know to do. And I don't mean that any other way than what I say. Like, I know I give good advice, at least I think. You know, we all have a bit of an ego. But I know if I stick to my own advice, I do quite well. By doing the channel and giving the advice, it's a reminder of what my game plan is. And it has made me a lot more patient in my trades. I'm super emotional. And I'm that guy who sells at the bottom and buys at the top. So I don't want you hearing any of it the wrong way, which is why I'm so sensitive to you need to do your own research and you need to learn yourself and everything else. But it's also why I have the account that I don't touch things in. I really believe those are great companies. And I found since I've done that, the, the stocks perform, and that, that account does quite well. My trading account for a while was struggling. Since I've been doing the channel, I've gotten much better about sticking with the companies I believe in and not getting so uptight about the ups and downs of the moves. And even though in my brain and in my heart I'm getting stressed or excited or whatever it is based on the moves, since I get this venue and I get to talk about it, it's actually made me be better about being patient when things are going against me and potentially even looking for things to buy when the markets are having tough days. And then being better about on the up days about if it was a stock that I was trading, maybe it's time to get out instead of change what that goal was and think, oh, well, I like this company, even if that wasn't what it was. Anyway, back to Exxon and Chevron. As I get older, and this is why you need to do your research, because for me, it's what fits for my life, I want to transition to more dividend stocks because my goal eventually is to really not pay attention to any of it. I mean, I'll pay attention because I love to, and I won't be able to help it, and I'm still going to watch the channels, and I'm still going to have my own thoughts, but where the dividend checks are covering the bills so I don't pay too close attention to what's going on with the stocks. In the meantime, I still want to own companies like Google and Amazon and Meta and things that either have a really small dividend because they just implemented them or potentially don't even have a dividend at all 
because I th I think, you know, obviously I'm not right all the time, that they're going to perform over time better than me putting it in something that pays a nice dividend that's a little more mature and maybe doesn't have the same growth going forward. That's just my thought on those stocks. At the same time, as they go up and up and up, which is what I hope, I can then transform and move those into more dividend stocks, which brings me back to Exxon and Chevron. And the reason that I still hold them is they still pay a decent dividend and they are cash cows and they do just fine. And even with the hyperbole about the transformation out of, you know, combustion engines into electric vehicles and whatever else, I don't picture a world where we're not still reliant on oil and gas. I'm guessing that ships are still going to need it and airplanes and trucks for a long time. I just don't see it happening overnight. And I also think these are pretty smart companies that are well aware of what's going on and are probably investing in energy sources, period, in order to be a strong uh, company in that space, in, 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 no matter what happens with oil and gas specifically. Um, you know, I'm sure the other companies are good as well. I th I've always grown up with Exxon um, and I've always grown up with Chevron. So that's why I gravitated to those two stocks. Again, I don't know what I think at the prices today, but I'm not looking to make, make any changes in them. And there's no reason for me not to keep them. Uh, would I buy them here? Yeah, I mean, the price to earnings ratios look just fine. I'm just not as attracted at a 4% yield as I was when it was paying 10%. And I thought the company was doing just fine. Now, the interesting thing is I was seeing that, you know, Warren Buffett and Jamie Diamond and Charlie Munger before he passed were all talking about expectations on investments going forward and people needing to be expecting not to do as well as in investments because of what's going on geopolitically and in terms of how much our governments have borrowed and how much debt they're getting into. I agree with them on one side of that. I think the governments have spent too much. I think that we are in a transition phase where the debt is getting to be too big of a problem. I, I've been listening to that since I was eight or 10 years old. And there used to be this thing in New York where you could see the national debt just going around a building and, and it was constantly going up. They don't do that anymore, but if they did, I'm sure it would be going up much quicker. The thing is, is Americans are Americans, and the way we invest, I, I think the markets are not going to change. I think there's still opportunity to have good returns, but I think you have to be a little more aware of what's going on and be careful about it because the ups and downs might get more extreme. That's kind of more what I picture. I, I still think the markets are super emotional. And just like I saw in the 90s going up until the dot-com era, the markets went a lot further than anybody expected before they reversed. It gets to the point that it draws everybody in. That's why I'm still bullish the market. It's not that I don't think it may not be overpriced because, you know, over when you look at decades and decades right now, it seems like we're probably on the higher end of valuations. But I honestly think you go higher and higher before you reverse and you don't just fit in this phase of where the pricing makes more sense and you just get lower returns. I think we're more likely to have what people are referring to as a melt up, then we'll correct and come down, and then we'll catch ourselves and go back to going up again. I think that's just a natural progression of markets and that people don't change, which is why they say, you know, things are always different, but they're also not different. So. I agree with them that the government's gone too far. I don't think that we're only going to get 3% returns because the inflation is going to impact earnings. I actually think for some companies, the inflation's going to end up helping them because the margins will be bigger and they'll have better earnings. The other thing to be cautious of is the reason I say don't take my advice is you have to believe in the company you buy. If you buy the company that I recommend, and it's not the one that you think is the great company, you're probably going to mismanage it and not trade it well. If it goes down, you're going to second guess it because it wasn't what you believed in. 
and I love you guys sharing the stocks that you pick, and I will look into them as well. I'll tell you my opinions on them if I watch them. You know, somebody talked about Chewy as well as, um, I, I forget the other one, but I think they're right. I think that being in the space with pets is a great thing to be in. I also think the companies they picked are ones that probably people who can afford their pets pretty easily are going to stick with. So even if there's a downturn, it's probably a good space to be in. I don't watch those stocks, so it's really just an opinion and not anything that I have any insight on. Um, just my thoughts when they gave those suggestions, I really like those ideas. Um, then the other thing, a real rant real quick. I've been noticing more and more YouTubers selling their sign up for Moo Moo, or I watched one today that's a real estate guy that I, I love his channel. I generally disagree with him, but he, he I, I, he's here in Las Vegas and he's really negative on the markets as I'm watching them continue to go higher and higher and higher saying, you know, I don't know, I think they're going to continue higher. And you keep for the past two or three years talking about how this big collapse is coming. And we have F1 and we have, you know, baseball team and basketball team potentially coming here. We now have the football team here and the hockey team. And now Mark Wahlberg is doing Universal Studios out here. Uh, I think Las Vegas is doing great. And yeah, prices are high, interest rates are high, but look at California and how far they can go or, or places like that. So I'm noticing even he started selling investing in in fine art and these other ones selling in, God, sign up for this thing for tracking your stocks and whatever else. Guys, do your own research. Don't listen to any of us. You'll do just fine if you just save your money and put away and invest in the things you know about. If you work in a specific field and you have a good understanding of what you do and you know things that are going to continue to go up in value that, that I won't or other people won't, anything is okay. All of the things that go up tend to go up. There are fields that I wish I knew more about because I'd love to invest in them, but I just don't. So I don't invest in them. I don't worry about it. Life is only so long and you really have to know the things that you know and, and know yourself well enough to stick with those. Don't worry about the ancillary stuff that you have no idea about. And if you miss out on the next greatest thing, that's okay as long as you're in a bunch of really good things. You know, I talk about, I use Palantir as an example because so many people talk about it. Maybe it is the next greatest thing and you watch the stock go from $20 to $2,000. I have no idea, but you know what? I'm not going to bet on it because I've made too many of those bets over the years where for the one that works out, I lose way too much money on the ones that don't. So I'd rather just sit around and buy Amazon and not worry about it because if it falls in half, I'm still comfortable that Amazon is Amazon and in 10 years, they're likely going to still be in business and they're likely going to be bigger than they are today. And if I pick enough Amazons, whichever companies those are, they should be just fine and I should get a good return on my investments. And then I work backwards to see how much money I need per month to try to live my life, which is why I say I'm kind of transitioning into those dividend stocks and I need to save enough money to be able to have enough invested in dividends that I have that revenue coming in month in and month out. That takes a long time to get to and you need an active income to be able to invest in things to be able to grow to that passive income. Don't buy into those get rich quick guys or the guy who tells you because Nvidia went up after the earnings a whole ton that he put 25% of his entire worth into it. Because if you pay attention to what he said beforehand, he said if Nvidia is trading around 800 or $850 before they announce their earnings, I might pick some up. Well, it wasn't trading there when it announced their earnings. So how you decided to put 25% of your net worth into it when it wasn't doing what you said it would be doing if you were even going to consider it because it could go up or could go down to then take credit after the announcement when it, when it ends up going higher just to me is self-promoting and isn't honest. It's really disingenuous to try to over, overstate it to make it look like you've made these always write predictions. You know what? On the next earnings of the next company that comes up, 
either it's going to go up or down. And I'm going to tell you, if you take the right side of that, you'll make a lot of money. Yeah, genius, guys. Anyway, that's my done ranting. Have a great rest of your Saturday. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that like button. Make some comments. Tell me what you guys think, what you like, and uh, what you think of Exxon and Chevron. Have a good day.